My name is Fiona Mwende and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're coming across my YouTube channel for the first time, allow me to invite you to the Soft Life Residence community. We enjoy visiting restaurants, fine dining experiences, and travel from time to time. So if that's something that interests you, kindly click the subscribe button, like this video, and comment your thoughts on what you think about the video after watching it. So without further ado, let me welcome you to South Africa Day 2. I'm a creature of habit and uh, holiday or not, I will wake up at five o'clock. So as usual, I was up by five o'clock, went to the gym a bit and went for breakfast. The breakfast at uh, Palazzo Monte Cassino is uh, pretty well detailed. There were a lot of options from juices, uh, hot meals, uh, sandwiches, you know, it, it was a whole spread with fruits and everything. And uh, I would say the breakfast area was pretty packed. That should show the amount of people that were living in the place. And uh, something else that was not working is there was a lot of business meetings a lot there. But they still managed to make the environment very warm and um not the feeling of having so many people around so yeah so just check out the video and see We passed by Soweto. We didn't exactly go in Soweto, but just we were like pointed. Uh, so you'll just see like snippets of the places where we were pointed and told that that, that area is Soweto. And 
I realized that Soweto is an abbreviation. Well, that I didn't know. And it, it's an abbreviation for Southwestern Townships. It's a vibrant township in Johannesburg uh, that played a, a great role in the apartheid movement. And it's known for its rich history, cultural diversity, and resilient community spirit. Considering we were in Johannesburg, there was a lot of historical places to visit. The first places we considered visiting was Hector Peterson Museum. So Hector Peterson is a 13-year-old student who was killed during the protest against the apartheid regime. The Hector Peterson Museum is a reminder of the Soweto uprising in 1976. The museum showcases photographs and exhibits that document the tragic event and uh, show the broader struggle against racial segregation and oppression back then. So something not for you that happened, just before you get to the Mandela house, there are some dancers wearing some traditional attires and they like the welcome committee. Uh, it was really, really interesting just to watch them dance, you know. <laughs> Why are they doing that? What's wrong with this one? Oh my god! So thereafter, we went to the Mandela house. I mean, this is a historical place to visit just to be able to understand the life of the late president Nelson Mandela. And Mandela House is located in Soweto, South Africa, and it's the former home of Nelson Mandela uh, from 1946 to 1962. So right after we headed to a place that I really, really, really was so excited to visit because of all the street, the street art that I had seen on the internet, so vibrant. I was just like, we have to visit this place no matter what time we are done. So the place is Maboneng. So apparently Maboneng means the place of light located in Sesotho. You can consider Maboneng as a vibrant neighborhood 
uh, in Johannesburg that has been transformed from a neglected industrial area to a trendy and artistic hub. It's filled with cafes, art galleries, boutiques, lively street art, as you can see, that attracts both locals and tourists alike. I mean, uh, as you go around, you could see artwork, as you can see, right from where I was taking photos at, to people just walking around with like a sound system playing such loud music and, you know, just looking so unbothered. Some kids were running around in, um, in, um, in skate skaters skateboards yeah skateboards yeah so it was it was just a, such a lively place to be in i love the energy of that place it was it was pretty beautiful and uh yeah so when you're in south africa be sure to visit uh Maboneng. i would advise that you visit with a local that way you're able to understand what areas to go to what streets have the art because it's not exactly every street so they are able to guide you a bit more Before now, it's accommodation. Yeah. Yeah. So, after our eventful and history packed full day, we headed back to the restaurant uh, to the hotel at Palazzo and uh. Yeah, got ready. We had made a reservation in this beautiful hotel that we were looking forward to visit. So for dinner, we got uh, two recommendations from our driver. He proposed the St. Santon and the Marble Restaurant. And upon looking, we settled for the St. Santon. So the St. Hotel in Santon is a fine dining luxury restaurant that offers a unique and upscale experience for visitors. With its stylish architecture, the high-end restaurant was definitely an experience to remember. My understanding is that the Saint Santon is a popular restaurant that a lot of uh, people in South Africa visited and it was fully packed. So thank God we actually made a reservation. So if you consider going to the Saint, make a reservation so you're able to secure a table. My experience, the service was uh, pretty average, quite frankly. Um, I don't know if it's because they had so many people or if it's the standard of the place, but the service was pretty average. The food was good. I would give it like a 7.5 out of 10. Oh my God, it was 
loud that the music was too much that is one thing that i would say that takes away from like we could barely have a conversation it was so loud beautiful place it was a nice way to experience uh, how south africans are you know it's just beyond the fine dining calm music it was it was it was a very vibrant restaurant to be in so thereafter we called it a night uh, and headed back to the hotel uh, 30 minutes away from the scene so it was a bit of a drive so if you've enjoyed experiencing day two of south africa with me click the subscribe button like this video comment and let me know what stood out for you during this uh, day what you found was uh, pretty interesting or informative and let me know in the comment section if you're ready for day three